Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff Mixing Course. This course is 15 lessons long, and in these 15 lessons, you will learn to mix a whole track from start to end using only Ableton Live's own stock devices. What you will learn is a mixing workflow that works for any type of genre and any type of song, the key concepts of mixing, awesome techniques, and ways to apply the Ableton Live stock devices into your mix, as well as some fun tips and tricks. While watching this course, you can actually practice and do exactly what I'm doing in the videos using a song that I have created just for this course. You can download the stems and Ableton Live practice session from the link down below. No previous mixing experience needed. I will explain everything to you and you can get started with your mixing. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified every single time I post a new video for this course. Let's get started with mixing. Hey, this episode is about equalizer. Honestly, it's one of the best tools ever for mixing one of the most important things ever. So very excited about that. Also, thank you so much for our official sponsors, DistroKid, for sponsoring this whole mixing course. DistroKid has been so useful for me as an independent artist, and they have so many different features that really can help you to promote your releases. So please check out in the end of this video, I'm showing a little demonstration of my favorite features on DistroKid. But hey, now let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so now we have prepared, we know what gain staging is, we're gonna go and start mixing it finally episode five here we are okay so now we're gonna start with eq so we have different kind of eqs here we have channel eq eq8 and eq3 if you want an intro or light you only have a channel eq and eq3 so channel eq has uh, three different bands so we have the low band, we have a mid band, and we have a high band. Right, and then we have, of course, output control for gain staging, as we learned in the last episode. Channel EQ is like a limited version of this one, so EQ8. EQ8 has frequency control gain control and Q control. So these are controls for each band. We have eight bands of uh, filters that we can apply. Plus we have these different controls here on the right to control everything even more in detail. I have a whole video about EQ8 done in my channel. So please go from the link down below and just check that out if you want to know what every single thing in this mean. But in this video, I'm just showing how to use EQ in mixing and how are we applying it. The point of mixing is to separate everything so that they all sound, all the elements, all the instruments sound good together as a, as a thing. The most common issue with when you were trying to separate everything on their own place, we don't only mean like left or right or something, we also mean frequency range. So frequency range means that we can actually separate things on a frequency spectrum. So this here is a frequency spectrum. Human hearing is from uh, from 20 hertz, which is around here, all the way to 20 kilohertz. That's how much we can hear. And that's why almost every single item and any single sound is going to be on this frequency range. What I mean with this is that I can take here a MIDI track and I can add a wavetable. So if I press, you can just see this pure tone on the EQ. You can see the notes going up and down. But rarely the world is full of pure tones. Example, guitar is not going to be on a pure tone. Example, vocals are not going to be pure tone. And what I mean with this is that they will have lots and lots of frequencies happening same time. So example, have a look now in a comparison, what happens with vocals. So not only you can get a lot of frequencies in the middle, but you also have stuff happening on the right, all the way in the low end where we don't even hear. We don't even hear under 20 Hertz, but we can still see frequencies in there. So actually frequencies on every single sound, is it vocals, is it guitar, is it piano? It will have a lot of, lot of stuff happening, but 
the fact is we don't need all those frequencies. I don't need those frequencies here. I don't need here. I don't need all of this. I only need certain, of them, certain, certain frequencies of that signal. How do I know which ones I need? It depends of the mix and it depends on what instrument it is. But mostly it depends of the mix and also your artistry. So in mixing, I will say a lot of it depends. It depends because the fact is it does depend on so many aspects. The point of EQ is therefore cut away the frequencies that are unwanted. So the frequencies that are interfering with other frequencies on other tracks and also add resonance or saturate the frequencies we want to hear from that. If we have a lot of frequencies happening on the same time on the same area, example, mid frequencies is a really common area to have issues with. So example, we have five different vocals and all of them are playing same time and they're all happening around the similar frequency range. What happens then? Well, it happens a thing called masking. Okay, let's say you're in a restaurant. It's a very re reflective restaurant and you're trying to talk to your date. Full room is full of men and, and your date happens to be a man. The man is talking and then all these other men are talking and all the men's voices are in a similar frequency ranges. Well, what happens is that you cannot really hear what your date is saying to you because they, uh, the, all the frequencies are cancelling each other out because everybody has the similar frequencies so nobody can hear it. And suddenly your date has turned into a woman. So then now your uh, date, who's a woman, speaks up in the room full of men. You can hear her voice. The same way of the other way around. You're in a room full of women, everybody's talking, and there's a one really low-voiced man, and that man speaks, and you can hear that man better than any other woman separately in that room. And it's because of masking. So when too many fre similar frequencies are colliding, you can't hear any of them. <laughs> and that's the whole point of mixing. We want to hear every single one of those frequencies separately, and not all once, because if everybody tries to speak at once, it's not clear. We have an EQ. We try to separate things. Let's apply it now for the vocals. I'm actually going to copy a EQ to each one of these tracks. And I'm going to EQ all of them separately. First, I'm going to listen this one first by itself, just to see where it is in the frequency range. Will you tell me? So it's happening. You can see that there's massive peaks here. These two frequencies around there are really working on this. So what I already know from now is that I can cut the low end completely off. So I can go and add a high pass filter. And then how you apply it is that I take it forward, forward, forward. And as soon as I start hearing a massive change, I stop and I take it notch back so that I don't cut too much off. So let's try that out. Will you tell me if you need me? So I can hear a change now. I'm going to take it notch back and Will so on. You tell me like this. If you need me. I can also put the uh, headphone logo on and I can hear what happens in the high end. So is there a, some kind of frequency that I really like? Will you tell me if you need me? So example, this one works really well in 3K. So what I can do is add a little bit resonance on 3K for this vocal. So uh, this is the main one as well. So I can do that there. What I can do then is go to the around here, you tell me if you need? which is the muddiness area here. And I can just cut a little bit away from there just to leave space for specially synthesizers which are usually around this area so that I can leave space for others I need to cut from other signals so this is what I'm doing here will you tell me if you need me example like this you can just copy paste the one that I used and put it here and now instead of so that I don't need to apply the low uh, high pass filter again, so that I don't add the resonance to both of them in the same area. The other one was 3K. Now this one, I could add 2K, depending how it sounds. Will you tell me if you need me? 
actually higher sounds better on this. So I might go to 5k. So now they're both slightly differently EQ'd. So this means that either these are not clashing with each other. Will you tell me if you need me? Because we can add several different EQs on the chain. The first EQ, I just cut away all the unnecessary thing and maybe add a tiny bit of resonance, but I don't add a lot of amount. This point, I just cut away. And this is what I just now work on every single thing, on all the vocals. Uh, I could go here and just add that. Listen to that separately. Uh, so example, this one works really well on the muddy area. So around 900, 700, there we go. So this slope would just uh, cut it too much. So it needs to... Uh, So I'm going to cut away from this area on this signal. So this is what I mean that every single one of them is EQ'd slightly differently. We cut away things that don't sound good and we just leave the things that sound good. So then all together. Um. Now what I would do is go to the mids and pianos and keys and do exactly the same thing. EQ 8. Especially, again, I cut away everything that I don't need. And then what I will do is go to the low end, solo this group and do all this separately as well. Okay, so you might be wondering is that, yeah, but how do I know where the vocals are? Where do I know where the synths are? Where do I know where to cut, where to add? Especially when you're starting up and you're not really sure where everything is in a frequency range. Well, there are brilliant guides like example, this one here. Uh, this is a, your guide to frequency. I'm gonna credit whoever this is from uh, down below because it's a brilliant. So you can go and download this for yourself. This is how I learned about all this when I started up. So what you can see here is that it basically tells you kick drum. So 50 to 100 Hertz adds bottom to the sound. So the boominess, uh, 100 to 250 adds roundness muddiness area for kicks are usually here and so on. So if you just cut away for the areas that are not working and then you just add a little bit the areas that are saying that it's adding good stuff, then you can't really go wrong. So it shows vocals here, piano, strings, electric guitars, uh, snare, bass, everything. Everything is here. So follow this guide if you're not sure what to do. Okay, so I want to just quickly talk about DistroKid. So DistroKid is a, a distribution company, but also it does so many other things that really help you as a musician. This is something that I experienced now when I was uh, releasing my song, No, I'll Do It. <laughs> I just always like saying that. One of them is the fact that I can sync my lyrics. So you know, like in Instagram or uh, TikTok and stuff, you have those sync lyrics. So you can actually do it here. Okay, mine is already there. Okay, and then what we can do is go sync them. So in this page, you can then sync these lyrics into the song so that they are playing in the right part. Some of the other really cool things that you can do in District Hit after you uploaded it and you're getting ready for your release is example promo cards. It actually creates these automatically for you. So look at this. So it creates these in right sizes or mini videos. So we can actually get these here for your branding. Pick a song. No, I'll do it. Generate mini video. There we go. Look So I can just download it and share it on my socials. Also, this is one of my favorite things, DistroKit Upstream. So basically what this does is that you can get direct contact with labels. It privately shares your music, your streaming stats and contact info with major labels. Yeah, so I can just go here. Yes, labels hit me up. There, 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 there we go. Uh, all these major labels can contact me if they're interested working with me. Uh, there's so many different other features. Spotify Canvas to make the kind of moving images. Send credits to the stores. Get YouTube official artist channel using District Head. You can make a music video using Vizzy. This one here. Honestly, recommending so much and check out the link down below for all of this. Go and check it out from the link down below.
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, please hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post. Usually I always post all my Patreon followers here, but in this mixing course, I am now thanking all my Patreons in the info box down below. If you want to be part of that family where I do weekly live stream Q and A's, I give feedback, I give free stuff, presets and templates. If you want to be part of that all and amazing community, then please check out the link also down below. Also, remember, I have merch, so check that out as well down below. Have a very lovely day and I'll see you next Sunday because I post every single Sunday. Bye!